Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on the program Anointing. I'm Apostle Vincent Akosa, Christ at the International Church. Thank you so much. It gives me tremendous pleasure that I'm here and you're also there. And we are worshiping and fellowshipping the Lord through the media, through the, this program Anointing. May God bless you. May I pray that the, the power of God, there will be an awesome, tremendous visitation of the Holy Spirit upon you, and my grace and blessings will rest upon you. May the word of God be of maximum impact and blessing to you this afternoon. In Jesus' name, thank you so much. Let's pray. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for the grace of God that is upon us. Thank you in Jesus' name for affording us an opportunity by grace and for grace in Jesus' name that you will manifest your power and your glory through mighty God, your, the delivery of your word in Jesus' name. We know that there was nothing that was made without your word in Jesus' name. Now pray, Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that your word will not just come to tickle, to excite people. I pray in Jesus' name that, Father God, activate the action within it in Jesus' name, the capacity, Father God, to produce signs and wonders in Jesus' name, meeting needs, especially at this very crucial, critical time that we are in in Jesus' name, this time of the COVID lockdown. We pray in Jesus' name, mighty God, reach out to do extraordinary works in the lives of your people in Jesus' name. In the end, may your name be glorified. May your spirit and your power be felt through this ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. I want to stand on the word of God in Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13, I want us to read verse 14 to 18. Genesis 13, reading from verses 14 to 18. <clears throat> and the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot has separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its breadth, its width, for I give it to you. Then Abraham moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and he built an altar there to the Lord. I'm speaking on the subject this afternoon with our limits. We want to thank God Almighty in Jesus' name that we always have Abraham to measure up how God faithfully keeps his covenant to his people. We have to also understand that every covenant that we have with him he is the initiator of it. We don't deserve it. But he, God Almighty, the sovereign God, comes down to initiate his covenant. And then he binds himself to the promises inherent in the covenant so that we, if we keep our end of it, by walking persistently and continually obedient to the dictates and the demands of the covenant, then God's everything that he has said. It's not going to be in our lifetime, but generations after us, God will release the blessings upon us. You see, it was this, the reason why that in the days of Nehemiah and the high priest Ezra, in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 and 11, when the post-exile group came and they were having the first, you know, the, the Passover celebration, and Ezra and Nehemiah, they read the law to the people. They have been away for 70 years, so a new generation, they have never even heard of the demands contained of the requirements, the benefits of the, of, of the, of the covenant that God made sure that Moses rises down. When they read it to them, 70 years in bondage and captivity, and when they had all these major blessings and promises, I mean, when you read Deuteronomy chapter 28 alone, 1 to 14, 
Blessings will follow you and overtake you. They will come against you one way. The Lord will scatter them seven ways. You will be a lender, not a borrower. You will be ahead always and never the tail. All these things, they were listening to these things and they best out crying. What is it? Who promised our ancestors a better deal that they, they left all these promises sure for certain? Sure for certain divinely covenanted promises and assurance to go and worship dumb idols and hence allow these challenges to come our way. What happened? It was like the Apostle Paul bemoaning the fact of the, you know, Galatians chapter 3. He said, who has bewitched you? Who has so, you know, what is it that they used to hoodwink you to deceive you from following God and allowing these things to come? If we truly, truly, truly need to go back to the ways of Abraham, the Abrahamic walk and conduct, Bible says, against all hope, Abraham was tested, people. He was tested. He went through all the trials. But then the Bible says in Romans chapter 4, verse 19, that he did not waver in unbelief. He never second-guessed God. He never doubted him that God... It doesn't matter, he can grow to be a hundred, but if God can make human beings from dust, if God can raise people, you know, even skeletons, dead people who have been dead for long, God can use their bones and raise them back to life. He still have control, whether a hundred years old or even Methuselah's age, God can still effect his purpose and his blessings through that. There's no disappointment, brothers and sisters, in God. So now, and in this, indeed, I believe this is very much addressing maybe a particular issue in your life. Because sometimes there are people maybe we can begin life with, but to reach a certain place, there's a turning point, and that there's maybe, you know, a disconnect, a separation, maybe an acute, sharp one that has left pain, permanent pain and wound in your heart and in your soul. I believe this is the time that Abraham really, really, really needed a lot. His brother, his nephew that he has raised as his own. Abraham and Sarah were childless. So Lot was like their baby, their child, so to speak, because the thing is when you read everything, Abraham had adopted him. And then he made some little money. So now suddenly he has grown wings. It does happen sometimes in ministry. People you got to grow up, you know, you started with the people that you are raised, people that you are help. There are so many, they get to a place that they think maybe they feel they know better. Or maybe they, they want to step out and be on their own, go and explore the world. It happens in many cases and sometimes it leaves you with a very, very painful feeling. But sometimes there are certain things you can't fight it. You just have to allow the process to play out. So Abraham told Lot, and the Bible said, after Lot has separated himself. Let me tell you, brother, my sister, let me tell you this. Your calling is from God. Your dreams are from God. Your purposes are from God. Everything that God has said about you, it didn't come from man. So people can come your life and maybe leave you in a painful way, abandon you sometimes. Maybe a woman, a guy will come your way, maybe mistreat you and walk on you and treat you that you are nothing. And you feel so you, so humiliated, so heartbroken. That is a lot. He took a lot from you. Inflicted with a lot of pain. Listen to the name, lot. You are dealing with a lot of issues as a consequence of that. But you have to realize that you are, it is your God 
who will skip you and sustain you. Sometimes you don't even know how you're going to face tomorrow because of situations like this. We have heartbreak experiences, heartache experiences, severe acute suppression and all that because you can see that this is what a person loved that Abraham has raised. And then we became so selfish. You want to see how a narcissist behaves? This is it. Everything narcissistic. Me, 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 me. My, 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 my. Insisting on what it is like. Nothing, no reference to God, no reference to the past. There are people who are like that. They easily forget what you've done for them. They easily, so soon, forget everything that you have done for them. Abraham raised him when his father died. Now suddenly he has forgotten that this man has, is, I don't even know him. There are people like that, you will give your best, even wrench your heart and give to them, serve it on a silver platter for them. It's like you've done nothing. And if you are suffering like that as a result, look to God. So the Bible says, after, you see life, <laughs> you know that sometimes I watch some TV, a certain sometimes some people are marketing, some, they, they show a picture of before and after. All that you know is what happened before. The before, the picture of the before before you. You can see it, you can relate to it, but have you seen the after? God always showed up and usually about he takes his time. Like the old son, God may not show up when we want him, but he's always on time. He's never late. And there are no delays in this, in God's economy. So the Bible says after, there are something God will wait. After you have, you know, seen how people behave. Because sometimes you can just grow this, uh, this strong attachment to some people that you, you made them like, you idolize them. But the Bible says after. It is the after that you see the power and the best of God. After everything has gone on, then you see the power and the glory of God. So when everything, this man has just walked away, they have mind you, they have moved from Earl of Chaldees. They came as a family. Suddenly, I mean, this is very much a picture of the prodigal son, right? Give me my portion and let me leave. Took it and then says, see ya. I'm all out of here. Praise God. And then the Bible says, after he has left. Because some of you, you see, God permits certain things to happen. Because if he does not occasion such separation, any time God is about to bless you, he will permit certain separation to happen. It may not be a pleasant one, because there are some things you are holding on, but if you don't let go, you will not be able to apprehend the best that is coming your way. So God will make sure certain circumstances will knock that thing out of your hand. And so that was one of the people was Lot. Out of the way. And then after God speaks to Abraham. Look to the north. To the south. To the east. To the west. He says as far as your eyes can see. My brothers and sisters. This little property that you know. When we read the earlier verses in chapter 13 verse 2 and 3. The Bible says when Abraham and and, and, and Sarah, they have returned from Egypt. You know, Pharaoh gave him some money to pacify him because he took Sarah and maybe, you know, didn't know he was his wife. So that was where at least some of these things that rub off of Lot. So he got a little money and then suddenly he has grown wings. But he didn't know that the greater blessing that God has in store. The Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Neither has it entered into the imagination of any man when we read in 1 Corinthians 32, verses 9 and 11. 
No eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the imagination of any man. The good thing that God has in store for those who love him. After. Whatever has gone on in your life, wait for the after action of God. Because God takes over when, when it comes to the after, that is God's show. After everything has happened, now God steps in to prove to you that he's the covenant-keeping God. Whoever abused you, whoever you know, used you, whoever manipulated you, whoever took from you, whoever they, they thought they had got the best of you and they are, maybe they think like Lot is laughing all his way to the bank because they know. You took some, but you didn't take it all. In fact, the best is reserved for the last. Is that, is that not what happened at the wedding in Cana? The best came at the last. The best is about to be manifested in your life. And it's coming at the last. So now God has had his attention because there's nobody there to distract him. Now it is God and him, Abraham. So sometimes God will remove some people in certain situations that may be a major distraction or certain interloping or intervening circumstances. God will knock them out of the way so that he can get your attention. But sometimes too, we need these things so that some, because some people become too naive. We trust someone who becomes so naive. So God will let those things happen to bring awareness to you. So that now your eyes are open. You say, whoa. Now because of what the Bible says, Jesus Lord, learn obedience through what is suffered. We come to learn obedience when we suffer, go through certain situations. Now, now I've learned my lesson, so I'm going to depend on God. And that's why God got his attention. You see? He said, look to the north, the south, the east, the west. God is now showing him that his manifest majesty. He controls all the everything that goes on in the north, everything in the south, all the geographic angles. He is very God, the omnipresent, absolute, potentate over it all. The north, the south, the east, every geographic direction. He says, I'm giving to you. I am giving to you. Lot is gone, he took his loot and is gone. But listen to me. I'm going to expand you. I'm going to stretch you. I'm putting it in plain language. I'm going to expand you. I'm going to stretch you. I'm going to bless you with infinite limits. They will hear about you in the north. They will hear about you in the south. They will hear about you in the east. They will hear about you in the west. You, your name is going to be heard everywhere because of the grace that I'm giving to you. Who isn't calling Abraham to? Everywhere in the world we are the seed because he was the man who received the promise. He says, as far as your eyes can see. And God speaks in such language, such superlatives, because he is God. Words cannot describe him. Words cannot describe our God. In fact, when you make an attempt to describe him in words, you do him, I mean, you, you know, a, a disservice. Words cannot. The Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, when he was taken to the third heaven, says he saw inexpressible things, which means, you know, the, the vocabulary or the language, earthly language is deficient. In measuring up, in give, producing specificity of vocabulary and language that you will be able to, to you will be able to employ to describe what he saw. Words cannot, because it's just like Jesus transfiguring on Mount, on, on you know in Mark chapter nine. They say it, it was like you know the, the, the cross was like something like using similes and metaphors. You can't explain. Words can't. God is about to unleash some favor upon you because you stay faithful. Because after whatever went through, you still stayed with God. You never quit. 
Because sometimes when people go through certain tremendous, certain challenges, tragic circumstances, they want to quit. Abraham stayed. So you stay and see the salvation of the Lord. Stay and see the after action of God. Stay and see the after effect. So Abraham stayed and said, God said, look, all these solutions I'm giving to And who is that? He is the God who controls everything. His power cannot be limited or diminished. God can never be hindered in any way. He is the God. He speaks in Job 41 verse 11. He said, the heavens are mine, the earth is mine. Everything that is within them are mine. Isaiah 40, 13 to 16. He says, who has given me that I should give back? Everything is mine. This is the God who has it all, controls it all. Infinite abundance, measureless, numberless what? Blessings and resources. They are his. You can quantify numerically the things of God. So when he bless you, he bless you like, the, 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 like, like numbers don't exist. Because that's what, no, Abraham, come Genesis chapter 50, come and count the stars of the earth. In Genesis chapter 22, you know, your descendant will be like the sun of the feet. Sun. Who has ever, is there any scientist who has said, I've counted all the grains of sun on the face of the earth? Numberless. He released numberless infinite abundance upon you that if you try to count, you run out of figures. You reach a point that you can't count anymore. That is God. You can never quantify what he does unlimited blessings. And he says, I'm not just blessing you, but it's going to go through your children, children, children. Thank you for thinking about our children. But some of them may not be praying. Some of them might be erring. Some of you are running around. Listen, the heart of kings are in the hands of God. By the course of the river, he turns it. God will move some conviction and bring them in alignment to his will. Why? Because they are in covenant with him. They are not sitting in the church by you, but God will bring them back in his own good time. Keep on praying for them. So my brothers and sisters, it's not a lost cause. Whatever is going on in your life, whatever has gone on in your life, who has ever, whoever thought you, he has used you, abused you, misused you, manipulated it, taken from you, a lot, a lot. A lot of damage, a lot of pain, a lot of manipulation, a lot of, you know, you've lost a lot of money, a lot of this, a lot of everything because the person's name is called Lot. If you're relative, you hang with a lot, you lose a lot. But God Almighty will bring there His grace. He's a covenant for keeping covenant for fallen God. So get ready, expect abundance more than the lot that, was, that has gone out of you. And God is now establishing His covenant. He says, I will bless you and guarantee you get up. What the length and the, start taking test of faith. And then Abraham went and built an altar. You better start build an altar and pray to God. Dedicate those things that God, everywhere that God has spoken to you, believe it. And pray and claim it. Just lift up your hands and let us pray. Father, we thank you. Father, we glorify you. We praise and bless you in Jesus' name. That Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, a lot of people has hurt us in a lot of ways. A lot of people, mighty God in Jesus' name, has done a lot of things to us. In many ways, mighty God, that the devil has taken us through, mighty God, through difficult, mighty God, lots of difficult paths in Jesus' name. But we thank you in Jesus' name. That your grace, that was Abrahamic grace, gave us much, much assurance. That Father God, all that did transpire, mighty God, was just setting the stage for a glorious manifestation of your power and an affirmation and a confirmation of the, de of the, of the demands, the inherent grace and demands of the covenant that never fails. 
So we praise and bless you in Jesus' name. We, your covenant people, bless you. We, the community, mighty God, within the, the covenant community in Jesus' name, bless you that you are the God of the Abrahamic covenant. You never fail, and people may disappoint us, but you will never turn your back on us. So we bless and glorify you. And for those that are listening to me, mighty God, this difficult, trying time of the pandemic, mighty God, visit much comfort upon them. Those that are sick, please heal them. Those are God, dear ones, mighty God, that they are standing proxy for, for their healing. Release healing upon them in Jesus' name. We decree against the spirit of death according to Psalm 118, verse 17. For the Bible says, I will not die. I will live to declare the wonders of the living God. I pray healing. I pray deliverance. I declare liberty. According to a word in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 in Jesus' name. For John 8 36 says that he that the Son is free is free indeed. I bless and glorify you in Jesus' name. Release maximum comfort and blessings in any one mighty God that this message applies because a lot of things have gone on in their lives. Father, go speak into their lives. Let this message speak to them and bless them with a speed, with speed in Jesus' name. I pray with thanksgiving. Amen, and God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us in this program, Anointing. I'm Apostle Vincent Takosa. Please, if the message is being, a, this ministry being a blessing, call the number on the screen and let us hear about it in Jesus' name. Thank you. Until next week, is the Anointing. Stay blessed.